Now, as we all know, the, the difficult part in Iraq and Afghanistan was not uh, taking the regime down, but figuring out what happened afterwards. And in the immediate aftermath of Iraq, uh, we saw chaos, and there's this rise of an insurgency that is fueled by the Saddam Hussein's uh, Ba'ath Party. And so SOCOM special operations are called in to do manhunting and specifically to find Saddam and his, his sons. They do eventually track down both of them. Here's uh, Saddam after he is uh, captured by the special operators. And it's hoped initially that this sort of decapitation strike is going to put a lid on the insurgency that it's going to sort of fall apart now that Saddam is gone. But uh, unfortunately, there are others who are ready and willing to take up the charge. And so we then find ourselves in a prolonged insurgency campaign. Uh, and around this time, we have General Stanley McChrystal coming in as the JSOC commander. Uh, and Task Force 714 is the, the uh, task force he sets up in, uh, Af in the Iraq. And at the time, it was not particularly active, and there were still a lot of people who thought that elite forces should not be doing sort of daily operations. They should focus on only the big targets. Uh, but McChrystal decides that we can't do that, and Saddam has shown that's not going to work. So he uh, looks for ways to ramp up their operations and, and does so very effectively. You can see from here uh, there was only 10 operations per month when he comes in 2004. And it goes up to 300 in 2006. And this is made possible by advances in communications technology and also by the fact the Iraqis are you know, using cell phones and computers without a lot of thought as to the fact that they're getting intercepted. So quite impressive. And you know, a lot of people think at, at this scale, we can, in fact, destroy the insurgency. Uh, we also have uh, on the white soft side, and this is another term that uh, people sometimes get confused about, but they're, uh, white soft are basically the, the operators who are not part of JSOC. Uh, so it's mainly special forces and Navy SEALs at this time. But they also decide that they want to do this surgical strike precision raid, and go out and you know, haul, haul down bad guys in the middle of the night. And this is a move away from their tradi more traditional role of working with local uh, forces, local populations and will come under fire from a number within the community for taking them away from that. Um, the, uh, and so the, the, what we think of counterinsurgency typically of working with local forces to secure the population is actually done mainly by conventional forces. And we'll see uh, over time there is better collaboration between special operations and general purpose forces, or GPF as we call them, uh, because you know, initially, a lot of the soft were running around doing things by themselves and thinking that this was going to win the war, and they you know, pissed off a lot of the conventional commanders who were the ones who had to go in the next morning and explain to the population what had happened and clean up the mess. Uh, but over time, they learned to actually work together and that uh, what they did could be mutually reinforcing. And you know, there's a myth in counterinsurgency that you don't need to actually capture or kill the enemy, and I think that's false, but you had sort of a division of labor where the special operators would go in and do the capture and killing of, a, of leadership targets uh, while the, the conventional forces would do more population security. They'd go in and stir up hornet's nests and, and reveal targets. 